Welcome, everybody. This is Ron Siever calling, uh, calling in to our NSF webinar um, with the National Sports Forum and very much want to look forward to uh, thanking you all and welcoming you all here uh, to our January webinar. God, this is kind of a, uh, a big wrap-up webinar call for us this, this month because uh, effective, what, one month, I think, from tomorrow, uh, the forum will be going. Uh, so we're delighted to have you here um, on our kind of our what we call our know before you go, an inside look into the 2016 NSF. Uh, and like I said, we're going to give you a really good taste of just what you can look forward to in the uh, a month from now, uh, because we've got a really a nice snapshot from three of our educational pods, and we'll talk a little bit about it. But we want to thank you all for being here. Uh, a really a great group turnout this month. Uh, it's uh, we did this last year kind of as a preview call before the forum. And I see this year we've already got twice as many people that are on the line. So we want to thank you. This is kind of unique because normally we do these NSF webinars every month and we explore different program or topic or opportunity that's going on out there in the team and sports property field, generally from our four pillars, which are marketing, ticket sales, sponsorship, and business development. Um, but this one's different. This one we're just strictly focusing on the forum itself. And so most of our attendees are usually people that are either signed up, I think almost invariably they're first year people, uh, and they've either already signed up or you're thinking about coming, in which case we hope when we're done we'll have convinced you uh, to make the jump because on the 15th, which is Friday, our prices will go up. We go into what we call our late registration. So if you are going to come, we'd like to get you in. We'd like to get you in now. We'd love to get you to Portland and get you to save some money here. So with that said, for those of you who have not been to a forum before, and you might be just, this might be something very new to you, uh, it's a three-day conference. This is now our 21st year. Uh, so we have been around for quite some time. We started in kind of the early to mid-90s. Um, as a gathering spot to bring everybody together under one roof. Uh, it's very, I call it fraternal. Uh, it's very collegial in that it's very relaxed, very comfortable. It's a gathering spot where you can get your peers together from all walks of the sports life. So in other words, it's not just necessarily teams from the NFL and the NBA, Major League Baseball, Minor League Baseball, but it's also agencies, and you're going to hear from one uh, as we lead off this morning, uh, it's also from product and service suppliers. Uh, we've got a really <coughs> eclectic group of people that work in our arena uh, or our industry, if you would. And they all come together under the forum banner uh, to kind of, this is the one time each year where they have three days to kind of let their hair down and talk about not only what's working, but perhaps what's not working upcoming trends, uh, upcoming uh, you know, topics that are on the table, things that we're looking at, a very eclectic group. We have uh, a Sunday, our Sunday, which will be the 15th of February, um, is all devoted to workshops, uh, where we have independent workshops, some that are open to everybody, some that are closed. Um, we're going to hear from Stephen Corsero this morning. He's running one of the workshops that is open to everybody, a very new idea. First time we've ever done it this year. Very much looking forward to it. Seems like it'll be a lot of fun. And then we'll wrap up that evening at the Portland Timbers at Portland's Park. We're going to have our Sunday welcome. It's a great opportunity now. Everybody comes together. Uh, trust me, the, the, the conversation level is <laughs> pretty high uh, because we normally bring in close to about 1,000 people each year. Uh, so the event has gotten to be pretty sizable. So we thank you guys for who are, are veterans on the call for having been part of our fraternity. Um, and then we, we stay together the next day, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, we'll be doing um, super panels. And we also do breakout sessions. So Monday and Tuesday are kind of what we call our educational days. Uh, there's social at the end. Obviously, we wrap up on Tuesday night uh, with the legendary Budweiser Gala. Uh, this year, it's being hosted uh, by our friends at the Portland Trailblazers. So we're very much looking to be a part of that. It's a great way to wrap everything up. But that Monday and Tuesday uh, and Sunday for the workshops is when we get a lot of education done. You get a chance to hear from your counterparts in different leagues and different events and different sports. 
Um, I hear a little feedback there, so if somebody has this on a speaker, if you wouldn't mind pulling us off a speaker, that would be great. Um, but we're going to start out this morning. Uh, we wanted to invite in somebody who is a, a seasoned veteran of the forum, uh, and we were talking a little bit before the call started today uh, about his background because he has the unique perspective is that he's worn different hats at the forum over his years. We're not sure it could be four years. This could be his fifth, so he's got to do a little sleuthing there. Um, but we're going to hear in a second here from a gentleman who's the Vice President of Client Management for GMR Marketing, uh, one of our longtime sponsors, and certainly this gentleman is a good friend of the forum. His name is Todd Fisher. And for those of you who have met, not met Todd, well, you've obviously not been to a forum before, but he's out of their uh, GMR's global headquarters in Milwaukee, and he oversees, I mentioned he's the Vice President of Client Management, so he oversees the agency's roster of sports, their music clients, entertainment, the lifestyle focus clients, uh, and they have a wide range of them. So Todd brings a, a diverse range on the agency side with clients like Comcast, Hershey's, the Hartford, Lincoln Financial. Uh, they have a whole range of clients that they work with all across the world, internationally. And, and Todd, uniquely enough, uh, the first time we met Todd, he was with State Farm Insurance. And he spoke at maybe one, I know definitely one, perhaps two of our, uh, from the sponsor's perspective. As you might imagine, with sponsorship being one of our pillars at the conference, uh, we spent a lot of time talking about sponsorship. And so we thought, if we're going to talk about the sponsors, we want to get the sponsors in to come talk about us. How can, how can we as an industry be doing a better, more impactful uh, job for our sponsors? So Todd first, I think he might have been first introduced to the forum through that role uh, at State Farm. And now at GMR, uh, he's just doing it tenfold uh, on behalf of a number of different clients. And uniquely enough, if you were with us last year at the forum, uh, just going to, we, we had, uh, we have 32 breakout sessions. And if you went to any of the breakout sessions, I swear, and I try to get to each one just for about five minutes to hear what's going on and what's happening, the, the two things I heard all the time, no matter whose session you were in, you heard something about social and digital marketing, or you heard somebody talking about millennial marketing. And millennials, this one of this great buzzword that we're all facing, this next generation, if you would, of who are our customers and our season ticket holders are coming from. And one of the nice things about knowing GMR marketing the way we do uh, is seeing how they've been in front of the trends and they're helping us to, to and our, by I say us, I mean the teams and properties that come to the forum, to stay on the forefront of what's going on out there, particularly where it comes to marketing to this next generation. It's a very different kind of generation. So we, we asked Todd if he wouldn't mind bringing in a group of panelists, and we thought this would be very unique because this isn't the first time that millennial marketing has been discussed at a conference, uh, but this is the first time that it's, it's millennials leading millennials. Uh, most of the conferences I've seen are there's usually gray-haired people like me up there uh, talking about, you know, what we think the next generation wants. We thought it would be great to have Todd bring together a group of people that are millennials in and of themselves really making things happen. So, you know, without further ado, Todd, let me bring you into the call, if I may, and, and talk about our super panel here. You can see a little bit on the screen coming up here, the date and time of this session. But, Todd, let me turn this over to you, if you wouldn't mind, and tell us a little bit about the millennial marketing and what you're going to be covering uh, in this super panel. Sure. Thanks, Ron. appreciate the intro. Um, you know, I'm, I'm personally excited, as you mentioned, Ron, to come back to the forum now wearing a different hat, started as an attendee, uh, had the opportunity a, a couple of times to serve as a panelist on the super panels and now to come back and moderate. Um, I'm extremely blessed and excited to be moderating this panel uh, because of the folks on it. So a really diverse group, as Ron mentioned, of backgrounds and the thing that makes them uniquely qualified to speak on this target is because they are the target as well. Um, a, a really bright, talented group of, uh, you can't even call them up-and-comers, of very established uh, stars uh, in our respective industry across um, the touch points such as NASCAR, uh, baseball, golf, and the brand side. So my expectation is that we'll have um, diverse perspectives on not only the target from a first-hand uh, consumer and a marketer perspective, 
but also I think dive into some things that um, otherwise may not be able to be spoken about um, because of the uniqueness of Millennials on Millennials, which is first-hand perspective into you know, brands that they're interacting and engaging with um, at, along with their respective peers, but also things like you know, how to manage Millennials, um, how to optimize the impact of Millennials within your organization particularly as it relates to targeting this group. So uh, I'm hopeful like you are, Ron, that we're going to bring a really fresh, unique perspective to the topic and um, hopefully use a lot less buzzwords and a lot more uh, direct references and, and examples of what we see working and not working in the marketplace. Well, I mean, one of the things that GMR marketing has really done and done very well uh, is really get out in front of the whole millennial uh, topic, if you would, the millennial opportunity that's out there. And, and I know this is something you're deeply um, involved with. Uh, so, uh, you know, one of the arguments is that, or one of the points that we love uh, for our teams and properties know, if you're looking for help, obviously, GMR Marketing is the place they should be looking for this help to reach those that next generation of fans. But in your own perspective, uh, because you know we'll be hearing from your panelists, but we might not always get a chance to hear from your perspective, what are some of the challenges that you have seen when it comes to, to reaching this next market? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think at the core of it, it's um, the fact that they have higher expectations of the experience um, and experience you know, really gets defined broadly of you know the entertainment value so you see stats in the marketplace of you know 80 percent of millennials want brands to entertain them um, i think it, it used to be a one-way conversation and an expectation of how brands engaged with consumers and this target has a very different expectation where they want it to be engaging and participatory where they become part of the experience which is great for the respective industries that um, you know folks will be coming from to address at the forum. Uh, you know other things like customer service expectations, value expectations. I think we went from a place where um, you know categories were kind of defined by their own competition, and now you see consumers defining their expectations based off of what other categories have been able to deliver. So whether, whether that's you know. Amazon Prime and the immediacy and the gratification that comes from that, you know, shopping experience to the customer service experience of a of a company like a Zappos um, and many others. You know, there's an expectation now of how every company and how every organization, whether sports, entertainment, or simply you know consumer packaged goods, should operate and should you know be able to deliver for customers. And I, I think that's at the core of what makes this target. Um, most unique is their expectations of how they do business and who they do business with. I, I mean, you know, even to your point, using the technology uh, that a lot of the older guys like myself, you know, this is very new to us, but the, that generation, of course, early adapters, um, all the way down to, you know, their uh, they, they say that the common is about millennials, of course, is that their attention span uh, is much more limited than the older generation because they have so many different things happening at the same time. So you really need to market into all of these platforms, I would imagine. Uh, am I close? Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, I think um, we talk often when our, our clients are every day asking us about this target and it, you'd be surprised it's really not the companies whose natural core target is millennials that are asking the questions because they're already deep into it. It's those that feel like they're falling behind or have to be able to uh, adapt and adopt this consumer base in order to be able to sustain business success over the long term. Um, but one of the things that we talk to them about is you know, creating the value equation. Now, again, I think you know, old school traditional marketing practices would have been speaking at customers, much less speaking with them. But I think millennials in particular are really focused on you know what's in it for me. They're very willing to engage with marketing messages. They've grown up in a sea of marketing messages that have surrounded them from every touch point um, since you know since birth. That advertising has become second nature to them. But with that, there's an expectation that if they're going to have a relationship and become 
you know, any form of loyal to a brand that there has to be value provided on the other end. And so, you know, marketing, again, doesn't really just happen as a standalone function, but it's really about, you know, how do you create an experience? How do you create an, an overall entertainment proposition that makes it more meaningful um, and more valuable to this customer? No, and, and I think the topic, and I, I love having your perspective there leading the charge uh, for the folks who have this up on the screen. You can see that, you know, the panel was built with, you know, kind of a, a little bit of a varying different degree there. You've got, you know, Jimmy Small, the president of Iowa Speedway, who was with us last year, uh, and just a, a really great story. I mean, he's not even 30 yet, and he's just done some amazing things out in Iowa uh, through the NASCAR family and, and auto racing. Uh, Casey Romany, who's been, who I think goes back to, gosh, I want to say 2006 with the forum. It's been great watching her career develop, and now she's working on the sponsor side from Pepsi and putting different team deals together. So for many of our attendees, you know, Casey's the person that they're working with in putting their Pepsi program together. And so what's happening at Pepsi, getting their perspective uh, on millennial marketing and, and trying to get their product out there. Uh, Caitlin Moyer, uh, certainly a longtime forum alum, uh, just a real hard charging up and comer, uh, winner of the Sammy Award. I think the, uh, the Brewers, her organization, she oversees the advertising uh, along with Kathy Schwab over there, but she's the director of new media. They've won the uh, Ad Achievement Award now for five straight years uh, for best uh, organization out there advertising from stem to stern. And then Joni Lockridge. Now, Joni somebody I have not met yet, had the chance to talk with her, but obviously bringing a completely different you know, uh, perspective from PGA of America. And, and she's the director of digital strategy. So you can see a lot of, the, even in their titles, um, these are all people that are looking at new offshoots that maybe in many cases didn't exist five years ago, but is very much existing now as we start marketing and selling our particular products for the future. Uh, and I thought the unique thing was, and again, thank you so much for being a, you know, the person pulling this together, but it would be great to get their perspective because they're all millennials themselves. They, you know, they not only work in it, they live in it. Uh, and this was, we thought this would be very unique to get the perspective of people who are millennials themselves and dealing with their contemporaries uh, in marketing and uh, selling their services. And, and to this point, you know, Todd's session will be on that Monday, which is February 15th. It'll be on Monday afternoon. We'll wrap up our first uh, full education day, if you would, on Monday uh, with Todd's session. It'll be a great way to start the evening off. Uh, with our trade show dinner and things of that nature. But it's one of four. We've built the form around four pillars um, of, of super panels, if you would. We'll start off since Portland, Oregon uh, is our host and the state of Oregon is our official host. Uh, we want to start off with an, a snapshot, a super panel snapshot of, of, we call it the Oregon Trail, but the business of sports in the Pacific Northwest. Since we're up there for many of us, we have not either, we haven't been there before ever, or we might not have been in the Portland or the Oregon market for quite some time. And, and of course, with companies like, you know, Nike and Adidas up there, Columbia Sports, uh, it, it's a tremendous story of what's happening up there. It's a real track and field mecca. Uh, for those of you who haven't been up there. And of course, that is fueled by Nike and Adidas. And uh, so we're very delighted to start things off with uh, Chris Oxley from the Portland Trailblazers, uh, Rob Mullins, who's the athletic director of the University of Oregon, the Ducks, you know, Mike Golub, uh, who runs the Portland Timbers, and, and Jeremy Darlow from Adidas. So we wanted to give you a snapshot there. Uh, we've got, of course, Todd's super panel in the afternoon. The next day, we'll start things off uh, with a session that Marketo is sponsoring called What Keeps You Up at Night, uh, that Brian Burns uh, from the Oklahoma City Thunder is going to be moderating. Uh, we've got Ethan Kaysen from the San Francisco 49ers, their chief revenue officer. Uh, Ken Hudgens from Feld Motorsports. Chris McGowan, the president of the Portland Trailblazers. And Mark Prowse from MGM Resorts. Uh, Mark, we're excited. I have not met Mark yet. 
Um, but obviously with what they've been building in Las Vegas, a lot of discussion about perhaps a, a, you know an NHL team perhaps moving into that market is going to be very interesting to hear. A lot of us in the industry have been waiting to see what's finally going to happen in Las Vegas. So looking forward to hearing from Mark and finding out what's happening there. And then our, our final super panel uh, will be uh, called That's the Ticket, sponsored by Ticket Galaxy. Uh, and that one is going to be run by Tom Sheridan, as its name implies. It's about all things ticketing. Uh, ticketing is one of our main pillars, as I mentioned, along with marketing and sponsorship. So Flavel Hempstead uh, from the San Jose Sharks is going to be with us. Mark Plutzer from MLB Advanced Media. Those of us call it BAM oftenly, uh, often. Uh, Mark Kenny from the Harlem Globetrotters and Rob Sign from IMG Learfield Ticket Solutions. So we've got four great super panels. And, and, and before I let you go, Todd, as, as a multi-year veteran of the forum, for those uh, that are listening in on the on the call, any uh, any veteran advice for for working the forum, getting the most out of it? Um, you know, like most things in life, I would say you will get out of it what you put into it. So it, you know, it, it is enriching content by just going to the conference sessions themselves. But I think if you're willing to um, you know go in with an open mind and, and really a personal approach to the rest of the attendees, the panelists, the speakers, and even the National Sports Forum staff, I think uh, you will come out enlightened by what a refreshing experience it is. Um, you know, everybody talks about the fraternal nature of it. Um, it you know, it's one thing to say it, it's another thing to experience it firsthand, but you know, regardless if you come you know, every year or once every five years or you only come once, you'll have friends for a lifetime. And in this industry, as you all know, um, you know, relationships are what drive it. And it's wonderful to have friends in great places along the way to be able to share ideas with, to, um, you know, be able to learn from and, you know, just to be able to turn to as well to uh, make what we do that much more uh, refreshing every day. So uh, on that, I will look forward to seeing you out in Portland <laughs> shortly, Ron. Hey, Todd, thank you, my friend. I really appreciate it. I know we're going to lose you to a meeting here. Uh, so uh, we say goodbye to you, and we'll see you in a month uh, out in Portland. And again, thank you for, for running this uh, session. We think it's very unique. It's very insightful. And we're just delighted to be teamed up with GMR Marketing on this. So we'll see you next month. And, and with that, we wanted to introduce you to uh, another phase of the forum. And I mentioned that Sunday, uh, a month from tomorrow, Sunday is our, our Sunday workshops. And we have a total of 12 different workshops that are coming up. And these are, some are closed, like the NFL has their closed session. It's just for the NFL teams and people they've invited in. Uh, this is the team's opportunity uh, within, let's say, the NFL. Major League Baseball has theirs. The NHL has theirs. Minor League Baseball has theirs. Um, but within that scope, that that's their private day, and and um, you know they have their own agenda that they go through. But to that, we have a couple of sessions. We have a we have a workshop just for our exhibitors, for those of you who are on the line that are our product or service suppliers. Uh, we have a session that's open to anyone uh, to how to get the most out of the NSF. Uh, a little bit of what we're doing here, but just talking about how to make full use of the next three days, uh, if you would, and that will be uh, being held on that Sunday uh, shortly after brunch. We'll open on Sunday with brunch at 11, and then at 12 we start our, you know, our workshops. Uh, but one of the ones, one of the new ideas that we're doing, and you know, Russell Scabetti, I mean, a lot of us know about big data. Uh, that's going on out there. Analytics is a huge terminology term in, in our industry. And uh, one of the gentlemen in one of the leading companies is Core, uh, Core Interactive. And Russell Scabetti, uh, who many of us know from many past forums, uh, will be leading a full day on just really understanding and how to utilize, best get the most out of uh, analytics and, as we call it, big data. So that's open to anybody. Uh, and another session that's open to anybody is a kind of a unique thing that we've never tried before. And uh, the response to it has been very positive. Uh, people are very excited about it, both from the attendee side as well as from the presenter side. Uh, but that's what we're calling, this is our first ever, uh, the NSF uh, Tech Tank. 
uh, which has been really uh, well put together by this next gentleman who will be joining us. He's actually one of our own from here at the National Sports Forum, uh, and you've not had a chance to hear him on one of our previous calls. But, you know, Stephen Corsero is our director of sponsorship here at the Forum and oversees uh, all of the, uh, along with Dustin Willett, uh, they oversee the, the sale of and the operation of our trade shows, as well as our sponsors and our sponsorship family. Uh, so, Stephen, I asked when we started putting this idea together, I asked Stephen to champion this, and he's done a great job with the Tech Tank. So, uh, without further ado, Stephen, let me pull you in here and tell everybody a little bit about the Tech Tank and how the program's going to work. Thanks, Ron. Um, this is certainly a, a program that, that we started developing back in April and, um, you know, really, really excited to see how far it's come, uh, as you mentioned, both from the participant, presenter, and uh, as well as the judging and attendee side. So, you know, the, the whole idea really stemmed from, uh, you know, I guess what we saw back in uh, Cincinnati where these emerging technologies, social and digital and millennial, uh, conversations really kind of being prominent and you know figuring figuring from our standpoint is there a way that we can be introducing emerging new technologies to our attendees and really kind of having a platform for these messages to be conveyed appropriately and you know so many great technologies out there we decided to put a program together on Sunday called the NSF Tech Tank where we can really key on on four different segments of sports technology um, first of which being social and digital media, anything that integrates into the social or digital strategy from both the team, league, uh, property, brand agency standpoint. Uh, there's so many different ideas and, and outreaches going on, whether it be in venue, social and digital activations, whether it be through a corporate sponsor element, uh, you know, speaking with our guys, understanding that Social and digital assets are, are really kind of number one on the uh, on the sponsored want list nowadays. So, are there different technologies out there that can be uh, you know monetizing these efforts, whether it be on the back end through an analytics standpoint or an intelligence standpoint, whether it be really kind of driving the uh, the workflow, or whether it be an in venue activation uh, they can tie a sponsor to and really get them that great visibility. So. What we're trying to do is figure out, you know, five unique companies that can step in, you know, all doing something different, so we're not having five of the same ideas. But, you know, what are they doing that teams, you know, may not be doing that they may be doing with certain teams that are working, and you know, really elaborating on, you know, how can they be affecting different teams, properties, brands alike and uh, you know really kind of figuring out these are five new ideas each company is going to get 10 minutes to present and they'll be able to interact with a panel of judges that are diversified throughout the industry so for the social and digital panel we'll have uh, as we just mentioned in, in Todd's session Caitlin Moyer from the Milwaukee Brewers uh, we'll have our friend Eric Fernandez from Sports Desk Media Brian Race from GMR as well as Dwayne Hankins from the Portland Trailblazers as well as maybe adding another judge or two to you know really create a diverse panel to engage with our panelists or our presenters to drive the conversation you know how would this work in different different uh, organizations and really being able to hopefully connect the dots and we're going to translate that through uh, four different four different uh, panel presentations here so we'll have ticketing solutions in venue fan engagement as well as what we call wild about apps obviously apps becoming a really uh, prominent force in the sports industry and you know figuring out you know understanding that these millennials are really tied to their smartphones and uh, you know trying to trying to figure out you know what are what are five new ideas that are out there that can be implemented so it's really uh, you know it's come a long way we, we've seen some great response as you mentioned not only from the participant side uh, I believe we have about four slots left out of our 20 total um, ranging across all of them with two of our flights being almost filled out here so uh, certainly a, a last call and then uh, as far as the judges go you know just some great feedback you know whether they're not going to be able to judge or just sit in an attend it's it's a uh, it's a platform where they can come in and figure out some new technologies and see if there's a, uh, a fit for them in their organization and their business. 
So if I could, now you mentioned it a little bit earlier, uh, when we go to a wave, you can see on your screen now uh, kind of how the day is going to timeline out if you're uh, watching here. So for example, from 11.35 to 12.50, that's called Wild About Apps. And there will be four to five companies, each one as you said, will get up to 10 minutes. When their 10 minutes is over, it's not 10 minutes and then there's Q&A, it's 10 minutes total. Uh, but so they have to judge accordingly. Maybe they only speak for five or six and give the judges four minutes to do Q and A. Uh, and then afterwards, they're, they're a lot a lot of time is over. And then the next organization gets to go for ten minutes. Uh, and and when they're finished, obviously you'll have seen four or five companies in this particular case that uh, kind of a wild card, if you would. But they're all applications apps. Um, and then the judges will excuse themselves, if I'm not mistaken, and, and they will all gather together. And just amongst themselves, we just thought it would be kind of fun to do. Uh, let them discuss the four companies or five companies that they've just seen and discuss which one they feel. They have their own rubric or criteria to go through, but they felt was probably going to be the most beneficial, things that they could use. They see the greatest upside uh, for that particular one. And that one will be announced. Each one will have a flight. Their their winner will be announced uh, that evening uh, at the Trailblaze. I'm sorry, at the Portland Timbers opening, at the welcome reception at Providence Park, uh, and we'll announce the four winners, one in each of these four categories. So if I'm at one of these other workshops, Stephen, if I you know if I'm at the NHL day or I'm at the BDSC uh, workshop and I can't get out to see it. Uh, can I still get some benefit out of what's going on in this session? Absolutely. I mean, we'll have uh, a few different options to catch up on that. And one thing that we will be doing also is communicating with our workshop leaders from the NHL, NFL, so on and so forth, where they can coordinate their schedule. So when we're running the ticketing flight, you know, perhaps they have the opportunity to shift gears into sponsorship. So all ticketing executives can, you know, have a place to go with some relevant content, which is, you know, what we really want to provide. Um, but if, you know, if they're not able to jump out, we will be having these video recorded and, and we'll make them available on our website. So if there's, you know, if you really wanted to see them, you know, there's certainly going to be that opportunity. But also, as you mentioned, we will be taking a winner from each flight. So we'll have four panelists uh, joining us on, on a Tuesday afternoon breakout session called the Best of the Tech Tank. So if you wanted to come in, you can see uh, you know, what our judges decided were you know, the best idea from each panel. And being able to put them all up on stage and, and just you know, furthering that conversation, you know, trying to get these emerging technologies out there into the industry and certainly some things that uh, you know, our guys are excited to be doing and hopefully being able to apply to their organizations. I mean, you know, we had talked, you know, in talking last year, you mentioned in Cincinnati, um, you know, talking to a lot of these emerging technology companies, um, and one of the one of the things that they would lament is the fact that it's very hard to get an audience. Traditionally, I, I mean, outside of the forum, it can be very hard to get a senior executive that they need to try to reach at a ball club or at a sports property or an agency to get them to slow down long enough and let them explain what they do. Uh, it can be very, very tough to break through that filter um, and, and get a hold of one of these guys. So we thought by bringing these different judging panels together. Now, each flight has completely different judges, completely different judges. Our judges are only there for that flight. And then when the next flight starts, it's a whole new team of judges. And it gives our different programs, uh, our, our up and emerging, coming emerging technologies, it gives them an opportunity to get in front of, it could be four, five, six, uh, judges. In fact, we'd love, uh, you'll see on your screen, if, if you're coming to the forum and you're with a team or property or an agency and you'd like to be a judge, I mean, what a great way. It's about a, It's going to take you about an hour and a half. And what a great way to be exposed uh, to four or five terrific ideas that, you know, will really be on the cutting edge here. They're cutting edge now and they'll be on the forefront coming up. Uh, I know you've got some really unique uh, different uh, companies presenting. Uh, now, not to put you on the spot, but if you can put a couple out there, perhaps uh, that you know that really jump to mind that people will be hearing about and different things that they do, uh, and we can't cover them all. But uh, can you touch on a company, a couple of companies we'll be hearing from? 
Absolutely. Um, I mean, as we mentioned, I want to say we have about 16 companies confirmed and all doing different things. So, I mean, it's it's really kind of hard to pinpoint one, um, but, you know, just going through some of the different flights, uh, you know, in, in the ticketing solutions, one company that we're really excited to hear from is a company called Park Hub. And, uh, meeting them in New York and seeing, you know, they're integrating into a parking technology, being able to drive revenues from the team side, uh, really optimizing their parking, tying it in with the ticketing aspect. Um, so something that's just completely new that, you know, we have not been seeing. And, uh, you know, going down to the in-venue, uh, looking at a company called PlayR that has a very interesting virtual reality app that is working really well in the Australian uh, market and the Australian sports market coming through one of our steering committee members, Dan Magala, and you know, trying to introduce this technology as it can translate into the American sports market. So I mean it's like I said, it's really hard to uh, you know kind of pick out of all sixteen, which I could give them all some love here, but um, you know, I know everyone's you know, it, doing something different. I was gonna say I was just talking to one uh, earlier this week, a very interesting concept called Score More Mobile. Uh, that and I haven't had a chance to talk to all of them, but I I did get a chance to talk to the guys at Scoremore, and I thought this is I mean as I the more I hear about it, man, this is going to be a great session. Just hearing what's going on out there, there's a lot of really really smart people uh, that are developing some cutting edge programs that can help all of the team and and uh, sports properties to do a better job. As we said, whether it's just doing social and mobile engagement with your fans or if it's at venue, in park, in arena, how can we enhance the experience? You know, how, how can we be using, um, you know, the new, newest ticket applications to be able to make it more uh, meaningful and, and to tie in, as we talked about, we talked about big data, tie in big data. And what are some of the things that we can be doing? And, and as you said, if you win the flight, if you win your flight, you get to come back on Tuesday. We're going to do one breakout session. We have 32 breakout sessions, and one of them is going to be devoted just to the best, the winner in each flight, uh, to come out, and they'll get 10 minutes again to tell people, to tell the room, you know, what it is that they do. So we want to wish good luck to all of these guys. I know during the upcoming um, months to go, uh, we'll be having breakout, we'll be doing our NSF webinar. And we'll do an NSF webinar with our, our, our four flight winners, if you would, uh, because it's our pleasure to be able to promote the best of the best that's going on out there. So we certainly do you know, wish all great success to our presenters. And, and before I, I let you go on this, Stephen, is there, is there any last – I know one of the things you had a – I saw a screen on there that if anybody was interested in being a judge – and by the way, this is open to anybody. If you're not otherwise, you don't have another meeting or something that you have, you are welcome to sit in the back and watch what's going on, uh, take notes, meet people. I mean, the idea sharing, just to get a chance to find out what's going on out there, it is open to anybody. So uh, we welcome you to stay in for some. We welcome you to stay in for all of it. Um, but before I, I thank you and, and, and let you jump, Stephen, is there, is there anything that else that I might not have touched on that, that you wanted to add? You know, I think uh, I think we did a pretty good job covering this. Like I said, you know, we're excited to uh, to be rolling it out this year. There's certainly a lot of uh, great ideas, great technologies that you know may or may not be currently working in the uh, in the sports industry, but certainly uh, have been chosen because they have a, a huge potential to to be adding value to our our organizations here. Oh, I think that's great. And as you mentioned, if there's anybody listening on the line here that just dialed in and wants to find out about uh, being one of the presenters, if you would, uh, as Stephen mentioned, there's still four slots available. So when they are gone, they're gone. We have a month left to go. So I envision hopefully all of them will fill up. Uh, looking forward to seeing 20 great ideas presented there. Uh, but if you are interested, Stephen's information there is up on your screen. You can reach him at 619 303-1688, or drop him an email at Stephen at, and that's S-T-E-P-H-E-N, at sports-forum, S-P-O-O-R-T-S-forum, F-O-R-U-M, 
www.ncpa.com for those of you who may not have the slides up on your screen. Uh, by all means, just you know, reach out to Mackenzie and Alby, uh, who are producers of our call here, and they'll put you in touch with Stephen and Dustin and get you squared away. So, Stephen, good luck. Looking forward to seeing that that launch and uh, having a lot of fun with it. And uh, one uh, last piece, that, and we thank Corey for joining us here. But as I mentioned earlier, you know, woven throughout our educational days are our breakout sessions. We have 32 of them going. So when we go to breakout session, you as the attendee have eight topics that you can choose from. So hopefully you won't say, God, there's nothing of interest here. In fact, our, our, our selfish hope is that you'll come to us and complain that you can't be in four places at one time uh, because we want to present so many good topics that you're sometimes scratching your head trying to figure out just which one to go to. Now, as an attendee, you are welcome to go to any session that you like. There is no closed sessions. Once we finish our Sunday workshops, that's it for closed. The rest of the forum is open to everybody. Everyone is welcome. This is the fraternity coming together. Um, so for us, we take a look. We have different tracks. As you look, if you get our agenda brochure, you can, you can see our agenda if you want to see what's going to be discussed. Uh, and this is intriguing to you, feel free to go to our website at sports-forum.com and just pull down the agenda tab. And you can see not only Corey's session, more about Corey's session, who we're about to hear from in a second, but you can also see anything about all 32 of the breakout sessions. And you'll notice that they're in different tracks. There'll be a marketing track. There'll be a ticket sales track. There'll be a senior management track. It, even if you're not in marketing and you want to go to that track, go to it. Uh, you are welcome. There will not be anybody checking you at the door. Uh, the only thing we're looking for is making sure you're registered. Um, but we don't close the forum to any of our attendees. Uh, and what we try to do is present, you know, fine-tune certain tracks, if you would, pillars, and present different interesting topics uh, that we hear about, that our steering committee recommends to us. And, and that's really where one of our steering committee people, Jim Kaler, had first introduced me to our next speaker, and that's Corey Breton. And Corey is the Senior Vice President of Premium Product Sales uh, for the Los Angeles Football Club, uh, LAFC, which um, uh, you, you've heard of. You, they will be starting. They are the newest, if you would, the newest of the new uh, Major League Soccer teams that Corey has joined. I mean, they convinced him to leave. Really, he, when I first met Corey, he, uh, he was with the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, so long time there at the Timberwolves, and so bringing him over there, he knew that there was something you know very new and novel uh, that they're building up in Los Angeles. So you know we were, he was in fact I want to say he was the first person, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're the first person within the ticket sales department that uh, uh, that the new uh, LAFC hired Corey. So you know you've really had quite an, an, an a direct involvement in getting that team off the ground, getting it going, a lot of buzz happening about LAFC. And, and in talking to Corey, you know, it was very unique. And we talk about millennial marketing. You know, here's one avenue, social media. A lot of us know social media and, and what's going on with social media as a communication phase. But Corey has truly been one of the pioneers in perfecting how to use social media as a way to sell tickets, to sell our product. Um, so we asked Corey if he would come in and lead one of our breakout sessions. And this is just one of the 32 sessions that we had. But, you know, Corey, I thank you so much for jumping on the call today. Uh, tell us a little bit about your breakout session, if you wouldn't mind, and, and uh, what we can look forward to. Yeah, 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 for sure. And uh, obviously I appreciate the opportunity, Ron, and so to the rest of uh, National Sports Forum as well. Um, oh, no, no, we're, you know, we're delighted to have you with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, no and, and thank you. Um, as, you as you mentioned, mentioned it's a little unique to talk, talk about um, LAFC, especially with the news of yesterday. yesterday. Just to avoid, avoid any confusion, we are not the NFL team. Uh, we're, uh, we're the, the other football. football. Uh, so, so, but that, that's what we look forward to seeing kind of social selling. And I, I think for me, I've been fortunate enough to go ahead and work with inside the NBA for a dozen years. If I think about where I started 12 years ago with the Phoenix Suns, um, Nextel Direct Connect was like the top cell phone that you could have. Um, leads were provided on sheets of a paper. 
no, no cards for our CRM, CRM system. system. And, and actually, FAX was, was a tool that we used from a sales perspective to go ahead and contact final decision makers within the B2B platform. And so, in you know, a dozen years, the landscape dramatically changed. There's been a huge evolution on that side. How we communicate and how we connect with decision makers. There's multiple channels to pick from. Um, and decision makers, the most valuable thing for them is to is, is time. You know, you're, you're constantly connected uh, via your BlackBerry or now your iPhone. And so it's really what's in it for the final decision makers. And I think and believe in, in LinkedIn is a valuable tool uh, to allow you to go ahead and cut through the clutter if, if, if you're properly uh, managing it, operating it. And, and if from whatever organization you're with has a structure built around it on how to maximize it. And so, and so I'm really going to go ahead and, and, and touch on, on you know, the, the development, development of LinkedIn, of LinkedIn um, how, to how to go ahead and, and manage your personal brand, whether, whether you're, you're out there from a sales rep perspective or obviously you're uh, a job, job uh, teacher, or, or if you're an organization looking to go ahead and, and really redefine the, the uh, I would say, uh, how the marketplace views your brand. I think it, you can make a dramatic impact via LinkedIn and some of the other social media uh, you know, channels that are out there. And so we'll talk a lot about look and feel, uh, building out a uniformity between yourself as, a, as an individual sales rep and your organization, um, building out a great summary that is going to appeal to uh, businesses. Uh, personalization within your own, you know, your own network, whether it be from the groups that you're associated with, or on like the volunteer side, the community side, or even on the university side. Um, as Ron mentioned, how I got in touch with him was through Jim Taylor, which ironically is through my Ohio University side. Um, so I think that's huge. And then the recommendations. You know, the, the First place, uh, a decision maker is going to go, go ahead and visit when, when he's dealing, dealing and looking to make a decision on buying, buying hospitality or, or a partnership um, outside, outside of his friends, friends and outside of his colleagues. He's more, he 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 is more than likely going to type your name, name whoever that salesperson is, into, into Google, and whatever pops up first is, is going to be that immediate uh, impression. And so we'll work on with and discuss ways to manage that brand. Um, from, there, from there, we'll transition to content, content and how to go, how to go ahead and, and build and create selfless as opposed, as opposed to selfish. Um, I, think, I think, you know, a lot, a lot of these channels, social media channels, media channels have become channels, channels that are, that are, are almost uh, too much noise. noise is people, people are constantly trying to sell, sell each other. other. I, believe I believe that LinkedIn is an awesome tool to educate and to inform. But not necessary, necessary to go ahead and, and try to consummate deals. Um, and what, what I mean by that is the content that the organization, organization provides and or the individual reps provide. Once again, again you should always keep top of mind of what's, what's in it for the final decision maker. maker. You know, now, how, how can you go ahead and create content, content that's valuable to them and to their, their business as opposed, as opposed to just a product push? push. Um, the, the other thing, thing and, and, and you know, sales, 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 even though there's 12 years and the channels, channels have changed, people buy from people, people that they like, people, people that they know, and if you can build, build a personal connection, I think, I think that gives you a competitive, competitive advantage. And LinkedIn, LinkedIn is, is an awesome, awesome opportunity, awesome, awesome channel to utilize from a personal perspective and, and give your customers, your, customers, your prospects, prospects um, and inside, and inside look at who you are as an individual, and maybe some of the things that just you know, you know are going on in your personal side or your professional, professional side, um, and, and, and by doing, doing that, that, I think you, you make yourself more than just a salesperson. You know, you're your actual person that they can connect with, um, and, and so I think that helps. And so, so from, from, from that perspective, we'll transition to how do you utilize LinkedIn from a prospect tool. Um, there's certain elements of LinkedIn you can purchase advanced elements like Sales Navigator. Um, we'll also talk a lot about utilizing your existing customer base to drive decisions on campaign management. Um, we'll talk about the best route, the best way to engage with final decision makers and what that script looks like. Um, we'll also go ahead and talk a lot about the uh, six degrees. Beautiful thing about LinkedIn is you can see who is connected with some of the folks you're trying to connect with and how you can utilize those existing relationships to make warm intros. 
Um, and then on the final piece that, that we'll discuss is overall structure, both from the rep perspective but from the organizational perspective. So if you're a business leader, if you're a sales leader, you know, like myself, I think that there's the initial fear um, of giving your rep, these millennial rep, the ability to go off and really, really get, get into utilizing the social channels, channels because we, we were, were the fear that the they'll avoid the phone. phone. Um, you know, you know, there, there is, is no replacing, what I call the, the dialogue versus monologue, versus monologue conversations. conversations. You know, email, email text, text, Twitter, LinkedIn, LinkedIn all, all these other tools are great assets, assets but they'll, they'll never replace the phone. phone. And so and I think from, from a manager perspective, perspective um, from an organizational perspective, perspective the reps, the reps are going to go that route regardless, so finding ways to embrace it, um, to create consistency and uniformity for your organization, and ways for you to go ahead and, and reward the right behavior. Um, you know, outline goals for your reps to make connections via LinkedIn. Um, you know, celebrate the success that you are having through the channel. And I would build positive habits um, for your reps. That this just becomes, becomes another, another tool that, that is, is going to be built into, you know, really, really how you measure your reps. Um, um, so, 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 like, so like overall, overall obviously, LinkedIn, LinkedIn is here to stay. stay. Um, the stats, stats prove, prove it. it. Uh, the um, amount of decision makers involved in, in hospitality or, or partnership within, within their organization continues to grow. grow. And, I and I believe this is a great asset that, that all teams um, should, should, should embrace. embrace. And, and, you know, the reps, reps are going to go, go there regardless if you want them to or not. So, so for myself, myself it, was, it was a matter of self-education. Um, um, luckily, like I said, working in the MBA, where, where they were really the, at the forefront of this, and they embraced LinkedIn, LinkedIn, LinkedIn from the, from the beginning. Um, but I feel like, like it's something, something that we continue to evolve and adapt, and I've built out some pretty strong campaigns because of it. I, I think it's awesome and, and it, you know, kind of plays into a little bit of what we were talking about earlier, you know, with Todd. Uh, and For that sure. is, you know, the game is changing. You know, the way that we're contacting and networking and interacting uh, with not only our cost customers but our prospects uh, is evolving before our eyes. And, and you truly not to, you know, I know you're not going to brag, but I can brag for you, you know, You've really, Corey, you've done a great job of using, you know, a lot of the, the negative that's come back on the social media vehicles that are out there, like LinkedIn, um, have been that, yeah, it's great, but, you know, there's really no way to, to transform it into a sales uh, tool. Uh, and put it in my arsenal, and you really have. You've be, you've you've really perfected the art of building the bridge. You're not necessarily using it to quote unquote sell, but really just to engage. And and you've done a terrific job with it. And of course, with the millennial generation, this is something that we all have to perfect. We all need to learn from. Uh, I think the insights that you're going to bring to that session. You know, really, really helpful. Um, there'll probably be people in the audience, hopefully, that will throw in an idea or two. Um, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to hearing your session, and, and I know it's going to be a terrific one. And thank you so much for coming up and, and being a part of it. No, no, no. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, extremely, you know, grateful for it. And I feel I, I, you know, I truly do believe in the value and the power of LinkedIn. I mean, it's certainly helped me from a management perspective. And I'd say, you know, you mentioned me moving to Minneapolis. One of my greatest recruiting tools that I use to find both on the management level and also on the rep level is LinkedIn. So not only is it a great sales tool that the reps can utilize, but you know, I dove knee deep into it and, and was able to utilize it from a recruiting perspective. Um, you know, and at all my leadership roles, and obviously you mentioned earlier, I was, I was the first uh, salesperson, uh, you know, a member of the sales team to be brought on for Los Angeles Football Club. Um, I was on LinkedIn uh, on, on a daily basis, dedicating hours of, of each day to, to go ahead and, and try to utilize it to connect with folks and see what their interest would be in the pro in the property and joining on the team. So it, it, there's a, it's a multifaceted uh, tool that can be utilized at all levels. Well, I, I thank you so much. Like I said, uh, I, I, it's something that I need to learn more about as well. So I'll be hiding in the corner of your session there, uh, <laughs> writing 
copious notes, but you know, th there you have it. And and Corey's is one, as we mentioned, of 32 sessions that are going on. Uh, eight concurrently. We'll do uh, one on Monday morning. One on we'll have a block on Monday afternoon, and do it again on Tuesday. Tuesday morning after our opening super panel, and then again Tuesday afternoon before uh, Tom Sheridan wraps us up with the ticketing uh, super panel. Have. And as I mentioned at the top of before Corey started, you as the attendee, you are welcome and encouraged to go to all of them. We try to get our exhibitors, if you are on the line and you're with one of our uh, uh, product or service providers, we want to get you out of your booth at that time. Uh, close it down, get get you over to the breakout sessions, sit and listen to Corey's session. Yes, Corey might be talking a lot about ticket sales per se, but it doesn't mean you can't transform or translate it into how you could be using this very, very valuable asset to help you with your business and connect, uh, in this case, with teams, uh, with the team executive, with executives like Corey. I mean, that door swings both ways in social media. And it's a great way to tap into it. So, you know, let Corey be your guide, uh, you know, to, to how to use the social media tools that are out there and follow the tips that he gives you because he's one of the best at it uh, in the industry. And as I mentioned, we're, we're hoping, uh, we're looking forward to, we very carefully have vetted all of our breakout session leaders. Uh, they're just like Corey. They're just experts in their, in their field. We want to show new topics. Uh, we bring back some, some very popular favorites. Uh, we have the SAMI session, which is called the six best ideas you should be doing now, uh, where we give six of our top uh, organizations out there the opportunity to get up and talk about what they're doing in a particular field. So if you go to that session and you don't what we call S&D, swipe and deploy, steal and duplicate, you need to do it because great ideas don't care where they come from. And you could be listening to a program that, let's say, the Rams are doing or Ohio University. Those are two of our SAMI finalists. I think the Brewers are one of our SAMI finalists. You can listen to that and figure out, how can I take this idea and put it to work for me? Uh, so our hope is, of course, in addition to all of the good friends that you will be seeing again or meeting for the first time, the social opportunities, the opportunity to go behind the scenes at both the Trailblazers and the Portland Timbers, uh, and a great opportunity to explore a market like Portland. Really terrific. I've, I've, I've not been there before we started working on the forum there, and I've absolutely fallen in love with it. It's a terrific, terrific city, uh, a great state. And, and I love the fact there's no sales tax. So definitely bring your credit cards and, and your checkbook with you uh, because you'll save a lot of money. Uh, and so, but a lot of good things to look forward to. Like I said, three great days. Uh, that's a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, February 14th through the 16th. So that puts us a week after the Super Bowl is over. Uh, hopefully things start to quiet down a little bit. It's before Daytona starts firing up. Uh, I know it'll hurt us with a little bit with the NBA uh, because the NBA Sunday, the All-Star Game in Toronto, is that Sunday. Uh, but I feel like no matter when we put the forum, we're always on stepping on something. So this year it will be, unfortunately, the NBA All-Star Game. Hopefully next year will not. Um, but we want to try to make it as available to everybody as we can within the fraternity. So if you are a first-timer, you are joining the fraternity. Uh, we're looking forward to having you. You'll have a lot of fun. Uh, I know that uh, people have been very, very positive about it uh, over the years. Like I mentioned, this will be our 21st year. So if you would like to sign up before the prices go up on Friday, uh, please, by all means, reach out. Our website is sports-forum.com, uh, and you can sign up there. We have the triple play, three people from your organization for $3,500. Or now you can buy a single badge for fifteen ninety five. You can reach out to Stephen and Dustin about the tech tank if you'd like to enter that particular program. Uh, but however you get there and which capacity you're there, we're just awfully glad that you're making the trip up there. We'll look forward to exploring the Pacific Northwest with you this year. And again, my thanks to Stephen, uh, my thanks to Todd, and certainly my thanks here to Corey uh, for taking the time out just to talk a little bit about different components, breakout sessions, super panels, and of course our Sunday workshops. So with that said, we will see you in a month. 
Again, thank you everybody for joining us and we'll go back to our regular NSF programming, our webinar programming once a month coming up in February. And so we'll look forward to having you then and certainly we're looking forward to seeing you in Portland. With that said, thank you from behalf on all of us here at the forum and we'll see you soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.